Loading spinners. Almost every UI framework has them. So let's create our own using pure CSS and in the process, learn about fundamental concepts of keyframe animations. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and you can find the full source code in the description below. To start, I'm gonna set up a simple project using Vite. I'm not gonna use any framework and make this a simple vanilla project. Once installed, I won't need the JavaScript and we'll want to make sure we import the style sheet into our index.html. Now in the directory, we can run yarn dev, which will boot up a server we can access on port 3000. Inside the index.html, we'll create a simple spinner div, which contains an SVG circle. This is all we'll need to do in the HTML. In our style.css, I'm going to set the size of the spinner and add some styling to the body so we can center the element in the view. For the circle, we'll remove the fill and instead use a stroke. I'll set a color just so we can see it for now. Now let's dive into creating our animations. Whoa, whoa, okay, calm down, breathe. I'm trying. I said breathe. I'm trying. Keyframes are the powerhouse of CSS animations. They are how we define the animation by changing different properties at different points in time. We'll need to define a different keyframe block for each of the type of animations we'll be using. In our case, we'll need to create an animation for the rotation, color, and stroke width. To create a keyframe, we first must use the at sign followed by keyframes. Then we provide a unique name which we can reference to. We'll also need to create a code block where we define the actual animation. We can define animations in two different ways. The simplest is using from and to keywords. Here, we're saying we want to go from this state to this state. And in our case, we'll want to rotate from zero degrees to a full 360 degrees. You can pretty much put any CSS properties in these code blocks. Now, the other way to animate keyframes is by using percentages. This way, we have more fine control over the animation. If our animation was 10 seconds, 0% would be at the start, 100% would be at the end, and 50% would be in the middle. For the color animation, we'll define four evenly spaced out frames and set the stroke color. We'll want our start and end state to be the same, so when we loop this animation, it transitions smoothly. The keyframe will automatically interpolate any properties between them. The last animation we'll need to create is for the stroke length. To do this, we'll change the size of the stroke dash pattern using stroke dash array. This property sets the dash size and gaps between them. We can set a large gap size and animate the dash to grow over time. We'll also have the animation loop finish in the same spot by adding a dash offset property. Now, how do we apply these keyframes to our classes? Well, all we need to do is add an animation property, pass in our keyframes, and set how long we want this animation to take. We can also specify other properties like timing function and the number of iterations. For animating the circle, we'll need to apply two animations. One for the color, which will be six seconds, ease in and out, and loop forever. We'll also add a second animation for the dash, which will be the same, but only 1.5 seconds. Note, we can separate two animations with a comma. I'll also set the stroke line cap to be rounded so it looks better. Now we have a material UI like loading spinner. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here. You can use this in any framework and customize the animation as you like. I also have a growing community over on Discord if you'd like to learn more. Hope to see you in the next one.